some, it was like some generated mm -hmm. air. It yeah, it was generated because well, she had the table of contents Wally built by Microsoft. Doing work. Uh, and that's what well. happened. Well, if I were her, I would just I would never physically remove it and just put it in myself. Yeah, it's not that hard. Yeah. But that's the only reason that would have happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. But it was really, yeah, yeah. it was really, yeah. 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 more yeah. Well, she has some yeah. kind of command somewhere that messed up with its ability to create the actual page numbers. Oh. Yeah. So, so what's really weird is like it, it went from error for the first two or three. Mm -hmm. Then the rest the were bad. Yeah, yeah, so it just means in those first sections somewhere she's created something that you can't read. Yeah. It had the same thing in the back. German. Perfect timing. Yeah. I was going German. I'm trying to think. Is there any? I don't think there's anybody else finishing. So glad all of you came today, and I will call this meeting to order now. The first thing on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of July 10th, 2019. I assume you've all had a chance to look at them, and I didn't see anything drastically wrong. Did are they? Okay for approval. I, I guess I only had one kind of okay. comment. I don't know if it needs to be corrected, but in the last paragraph of part three, it said applicant will. Well, I guess we'll work with staff on removal of stucco. I mean, I guess I kind of thought maybe if possible, as opposed to possible, applying that possible it had to removal. happen. Yeah. You know, just mm -hmm. to qualify it, so nobody said you said that had to. That's not a bad idea. Not a problem. However, you want to straighten it. We we can we can fix that. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of July tenth with that added uh, clarification? Make a motion. We approve the minutes from July tenth with the modification. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor, state aye, please. Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Nay. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the COA for property located at 505 Richardson, COA number 2010-012. Um, thank you, Chairman. The applicant is requesting to do some fairly simple work, which is also complicated. Um, the simple part is they're extending, requesting to extend the back of the property. Um, a little more complicated part of that explanation is they're removing an approximately five foot addition, which is not historically accurate nor um, known the actual age when it was put on, but it's currently plywood siding. Right. Um, so it is, is definitely modern on the exterior. Um, the more complicated part is that they <clears throat> are wanting to extend it an additional five feet, beyond, 10 feet, excuse me, beyond the existing footprint, which requires that they raise the roof. Um, so there's a little bit more complicated part of carpentry but it's a fairly simple request. Um, you can see on your application, there's the photo, it's location on the corner. And I don't know, let's see if I have, it's kind of hard to see um, in there, but you can roughly see where the red dashed line is. That came out of a conversation and the reason we have Mercedes Franks, our city librarian here is a translator. Um, so it was, uh, Mercedes did an excellent job of translating. Hopefully she did an excellent job of translating. Um, <laughs> But this is approximately where the applicant was requesting to raise the roof to. So you can see it comes down here. So that support pans out. Essentially, we're taking that line and moving it up to approximately the part of that window. Um, so the style is still appropriate for that style of home. Uh, unfortunately, this property sits on a corner. Um, so there's always much more leeway when you're working with the back side of the property if it's not viewable from the public right away properties that sit on the corner are viewable. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And if you have any of the applicant that I cannot answer, uh, Mercedes will come up and translate for you. Chairman? Uh, we should also remember that the side street, Bodart, is is practically, uh, isn't it Bodart? No, what is, no. The, what is the name Ola. of that? Ola. 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 Oh, sorry. Ola. I know the street. I just don't know the name of <laughs> Ola is very short, very narrow, very much like a little alleyway. And I'm not saying that no one drives down it. The people who live in that area do, of course. And, and two, um, 
the, the yard is uh, flat right there and there's always the potential of someone planting a, a, a big bush or something there. So I just I always like to think about things that are changeable um, when it is in a backyard yet it can be seen from the side. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, I had a note of clarification. That's still true that it's visible currently for the addition, the ahistorical plywood addition, right? So Say that again? Well, this would assume that it's currently yes. the ahistorical five feet plywood siding is also currently viewable. Correct. And the proposal is to extend it but add materials that would be more appropriate. That is correct. <clears throat> they are proposing to add the board and batten um, in similar style to the existing, uh, which extends from the non-historic addition all the way to the east to the front porch. Well, the only question I had was if the style of the roof would change when they when these bid, but you've answered that question. So Same that material, works. just a different pitch. Yep, that works. <clears throat> uh, and staff, um, I'll, I'll make a comment that also typically when you have buildings like this, you have two angles. It's not uncommon to have another shed, even if that's a little bit fairly common to have for like lawnmower doors type right. modern stuff. So we still have the two the three three different slopes. You know, once once it's redone, you still have the one angle here and then another one there. Does that kind of make sense? So you're you're still sim following a similar profile. It's just farther up the roof line. Um, it, it, actually that's sort of a difficult thing to do that middle house that I own. Mm -hmm. Um had that very same thing and the back end of it was destroyed by powder post beetles and we had to remove that and left the fireplace and the ceiling was so low because that had been tacked on later that, that we did we were able to raise it just a little bit like about six inches but we actually dug down eight inches mm -hmm. and lowered the floor which was a pain but anyway, um, as long as it's done correctly, <laughs> it's going to work. Any comments? Any more questions? We have the owner. Would anyone like to ask her anything? Well, I definitely think that the board and batten would be an improvement over that plain plywood. <laughs> yes. Are they going to have to cut into the window or? No, uh, no, no, the window will be fine. Okay. It's the only reason they're going that far back is so that there's headroom by the time you get to the back of the building. I see. Okay. Okay. If there is no further discussion. Do I hear a motion? Sure. I move to approve application COA number 2019-0112 or 012 based on a finding that ordinance sections B and J have been met and is supported by design guidelines sections 1 to 9. Thank you. Outstanding. Very well stated. Sounds like you went to training. <laughs> <laughs> Very well stated. Don't call them out, <laughs> ah, Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor, state aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you. You did your homework. <laughs> I follow directions. <laughs> Life would be easy if we all did. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Very welcome. <clears throat> so, Chairman, this next item on the agenda, um, uh, those of you who've worked with Michael Dean in the past know that he recuses himself when we talk about his property. Um, he's already filled out the proper paperwork. We just don't require he remove himself from there and come down here. So if he answers any questions, he's not answering or speaking as a member. He's speaking as an applicant. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next thing on the agenda is... HRG 2019-002, and this is for a grant extension on a historic res restoration. 
Mr. Dean is requesting an additional six months to complete his project. Yes, and that is <clears throat> that is based on his carpenter being unavailable for several months. Um, <clears throat> both this one and the following item, um, Wally Knight has flown the coop and will not be back for another two-ish months. Yes. Yeah, um, I know. So <laughs> if, <laughs> if, 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 it, if approved, the, his, app, um, his grant will be due April 11th of 2020, he being Michael Dean. Do we have any questions for Mr. Dean since we have him here? <laughs> is, I do. Is is this particular carpenter the, the man who's been working on the extension so he's, he knows is he approved to be? Is he the only one that's available to work on your property? No, he's just the only one I've contacted to work on the property. Oh, okay. I see. But he's he's somebody that we trust to do historic work he's okay. done a lot of he's done a lot okay yes I, I, I got you he's the <clears throat> coach of guy you will see his guy. name you'll see his name a lot when it comes to historic restoration grant work okay um he also gave weather as a reason for yeah oh yes oh, oh, oh so early oh. on <laughs> weather and every, vacation every he was day. he was yeah. delayed early on in the oh. process because of weather I and now he's has anything been completed I'd have to look back and see the application. I don't think so. <laughs> a lot of also, a lot of preparatory work. I have a a, a plinth and a and a base in my inside my house that will go outside as soon as he gets there. <laughs> but you're getting to enjoy the beauty of it. Exactly. <laughs> right now. I understand. Box. <laughs> okay. I'll, well, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Approve the extension of HRG 2019. I'll second that. All in favor, say. No, sorry, April no, 11th. April. Oh, April 11th. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, right, right. I looked at the same thing you looked at. Okay, April 11th, 2020. I will second that. All in favor, state aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed, nay. <coughs> Thank you. And Wally's responsible for the <laughs> next one, right? And, and yes, Chairman, this on HRG 2019-005, um, I do know, and I should have, I, the applicant was here, so I didn't want to answer, but yes, um, Wally has done some prep work on both of these projects. Um, <clears throat> there was some um, working with the applicant or the owner on this one, on the Reese Jewelers, trying to convince them to restore the, the windows that are behind it as opposed to removing them. And so there's been a lot of discussion with the owners and the carpenters. Um, similar to uh, Mr. Dean's project with replacing of the bases with a synthetic material versus a, a, a wood material. So there has been work going on, just not on the ground. Um, and so the applicant has requested, or rather the carpenter has requested a three month extension on this project for the same reasons, weather, and then now he's on vacation. All right, the extension for this, the date would be January 11th. Are there any questions or discussions? It's, I'll, I'll make a discussion comment for okay. those that are new, that it is not unusual due to weather <coughs> right. or contractors. We, we have this happen fairly often. I mean, it, it's not unheard of. Right. Even Mr. Dean. <laughs> Even shining examples sometimes. <laughs> discussions uh, or questions do I hear a motion to extend the historic restoration grant I move to extend the uh, grant for HRG 2019-005 to now fall on January 11th 2020 thank you do I hear a second 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 thank you all in favor state I please Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to consider format of staff reports. Um, 
Hannah did a, a good job of trying to give you some examples um, of the different styles of staff reports that we've had over the years. And there are, there are more than just these that are in there as well, um, but these kind of give you a, a broader range. When we were doing new member orientation slash training recently, one of the questions, um, or one of the things that's, that I stated was, we are happy to give you whatever it is you want. If you want nothing, if you want everything, you want something in between, you name it, that's what we give you. So the current format is what had been requested. Um, and so the new member said, well, let's talk about it. Um, so that's where this came from, is we tried to give you the very simple, the first one that was from Robbie Crow. It's obviously also a very simple request. Um, <clears throat> then the next one is a little bit more detailed. But what, what's unique about the second one from Bruce Love is that it goes into a staff sort of discussion. You know, design guidelines do not recommend, and then we kind of, we either justify or, or not um, the request. Then you have the next one, <clears throat> excuse me, um, from Horace Mast. This looks a lot, a lot more similar to what we have today, um, this one right here. And then your last one. Um, Laura Culpepper, you've kind of gotten back to giving a little bit more information where we are saying uh, section D or number three, the proposed alterations may apply to, or the proposed alterations apply to. <clears throat> Another example that we don't have in here is where we would go through and say, this is how this specific criteria applies or doesn't apply, as opposed to simply saying, look at two, six, and nine, we would say, here's why two does not apply, or here's why nine does apply, or here's where they altered. Um, and don't, you know, don't be concerned with the amount of work you're wanting us to do, that's our job. You know, so whatever it is you want is what we will provide. And so here are some <clears throat> examples of things we've done in the past. So Chairman, it's open for you okay, to it's discuss. Okay, for discussion, folks. I'm happy to admit I'm the new person who asked for that. Um, I appreciate as much information as possible because of the uh, respect I have for the knowledge of people who do this in their everyday lives and who are uh, intimately familiar with it. While making the caveat, um, being in teaching preservation myself, um, that I will be intimately aware of the standards myself um, and that they won't uh, lead me to a conclusion but just provide me more information and more insight and I found that invaluable rather than staring at little information or just the application. It gives me more things to consider. That's why I had made the request. I found it helpful. I agree. Every Everything that we can get put in front of us will help and we it does not stop us from seeking additional information. Correct. It just helps. I'll make the comment enjoy the transition to the proposed work that has each element bulleted out because there have been cases where bullets, you know, the first couple are okay, maybe there's one in the middle and it makes it more easy to make a, um, a, a proposal where we can mm. put in, mm -hmm. n notice that the roof is okay but the wall isn't, the porch yeah. is okay but the, the foundation isn't, whatever it may be. Um, and so the transition to the proposed work being bulleted out, it, to me, is, is the most, I'm going to apply that to the standards regardless of whether staff says thumbs up or down, but, um, uh, but having, having those and making sure I'm not missing something, because that's, that's also where we can double check the narrative. So having the narrative and the bullets often make sure we don't miss something one direction or another. So uh, I appreciate, I guess, to confirm what everybody else said, more information, especially on what's being asked for, uh, it's very helpful. I know in the past we had some board members that wanted to do all of their own investigation and findings and, and I just felt like that was, the, the wheel had already been invented. And, <laughs> And I appreciate every bit of help we get. 
Um, <clears throat> Chairman, I have two, two questions for the group, not, not just you, but directing the questions to you. Um, we take the information on this, which is the application, and we transfer it to this, which, you know, we have it all up here. <clears throat> Do any of you find it helpful to see it in the applicant's handwriting or in the typed handwriting? The question is, do you want to continue to have this in there or remove it and have, I mean, it's either going to be both or I, this. Both are fine by me. I, yeah, I, I still I read both. Yeah. Because yeah. I still want to see what they say. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. I know why you're adding the, the applicant's one, but quite frankly, a lot of times it doesn't include everything because then they call you up and go, oh, yeah, I forgot the, and that's, the window right. on the left and side. And that's but, why I was asking is because we received this, Fair enough. and then I call the applicant and go, so what the heck did you mean by that? Like, let's enough. let's talk about but, that item. But, I mean, I um, think and so there's oftentimes much more that they didn't write mm -hmm. that we just include in the staff report. But that's to right. address the concerns of openness, it's fine. And fine. that's uh, no no yeah, problems absolutely. with that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Another question I have for you is, um, do you want? And we haven't done this before, so it, you may go, oh my gosh, that's too big of a change. <laughs> but <laughs> instead of including the standards on every COA, do you want? Would it be easier if you had a separate standards? So you get your packet and there is a page that's the standards that you just pull it off and set it next to this COA and then this COA, so does that make sense? So you have kind of your- I have to believe we're all reasonably talented enough to refer to one page. <laughs> well, these are- <laughs> but on the other side of the coin, we all do have our own lives. <laughs> I mean, we would include it in every packet. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. You know, every yeah. every just one, one nice in every packet. To see it, you know, so it it would save paper yeah. for you yeah. if yes, you wanted sir. to do it that way. And and I'm assuming you would also say this applies to guidelines and list them out. Right. We could yeah. just like we have. If you flipped your one that says uh, COA 2016-002, the applicant was forest masked from 2016. So we can still have everything right. above where it says in bold staff report. So we can still list historic site survey, list the property as. We can still say secretary standards of number yeah. nine and 10 relate. Right. And then you know, your staff comments. So you have that sitting right here and then you have the one pager right next to it. I know that the newer folks seem to think these are kind of silly questions, but over time these have developed because someone said, by golly, I want that on every application. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, that's, yes, sir. And so that, that's why we're going back and asking. Any other? Do you have any questions? No. Okay. So we will include the comments. Hannah was writing those down. Continue with the bullet points. Um, provide staff comments more freely. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to. Obviously, you don't have to listen to them. They are simply There's opinions. Yeah. There's a comment. Right. comment. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they don't hold any more weight. In fact, they hold less weight than yours do. So um, <laughs> you can go, eh. <laughs> Ignore them. And then we will have just the one page for the design, uh, excuse me, secretary standards. Design guidelines we will still include when they apply. Um, and we typically refer to design guidelines when it comes to signs and fencing. Um, because those are both kind of hard to apply to the secretary standards for a sign. You would never have any if that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think I think I had just a comment. I think that when you have the more complicated uh, applications like uh, 2019-011, the Laura Culpepper, uh, oh, yes. having all those comments is really helpful, whereas the fencing is, it's a fence. <laughs> you know? well, that correct. would be the comment. Yes. <laughs> German, we will okay. incorporate all those and you will see changes during your next packet. I think we can handle it. <laughs> Thank you so much. This meeting is adjourned. We're officially done. So, we, Chairman, done. can I request you to request the staff to put um, 
like the, the coloring book thing on, say, oh, October yes, 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 meeting? Yes. Is that okay? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Don't worry. I'll wait. Yeah. Okay. Right. The coloring book. Oh, yes. that'll be great. That'll yes. be great. That's going to be so lit.